with Goku and Gine adjusting to life as Earthlings and life with Son Gohan. They find themselves enjoying the simple things more and more. But as the Wayward Saiyan uses her scouter to scan the universe for any sign her elder son could still be alive, what does she hear? <laughs> Give the like button a hug because the world needs more love. Shout out to Zarkel Dai for being the first to find the stone Master Roshi hid in the last video. Hit the bell icon and find it in the next video and be the first to timestamp it in the comments if you want a shout out next time. And remember to support the author of this story using the links below. Soldier, what's the status of the mission? Is it true that the planet of the fire giants has already been captured? That's right, sir. The subjugation of the planet was a success. Hmm. Seems everything went faster than usual. Who were the ones assigned to the mission? It seems the Saiyans were responsible, sir. Those monkeys have always been the top workhorses. That's right, sir. Lord Frieza has always been able to keep them in check. And where are the Saiyans headed to right now? They're returning to Frieza Planet 43, where they will await their next assignments. Copy that. Soldier, that will be all. Now let's move on to other matters. And, uh... Ecstatic! Gine has heard firsthand that other Saiyans are still out there. Rushing in, she tells Gohan he isn't going to believe this. She was just listening to her scouter when... When? Urging she calm down. He requests she join him for some tea and tell him what happened. She explains she was listening to a report from the Frieza Force when they mentioned that there are still surviving Saiyans. That's all she heard, but it's possible Raditz could be among them, uttering that's excellent news. But even if her son still is out there, Gohan wonders what she plans to do about it. And she hasn't heard any transmission in years. But this is the first piece of news that gives her a shred of hope. She can't just ignore it. It didn't occur to her until now, but maybe she can use Kakarot's ship to go hack it out for herself since hers was destroyed upon impact. Which prompts the next question, what will happen to Goku? Gine states Gohan has already done so much for him, and she has no way to repay him, and no right to ask any more favors. But she knows Kakarot will take good care of him. This is something she really thinks she should do. The old man tells her this is important, and she hasn't even told Goku anything about his origin or where he comes from. Continuing, the Saiyan notes that losing the people she loves and knowing everything she knows has scarred her for life. She doesn't want Kakarot to go through the same thing. That's why she hasn't had the courage to tell him about his origins. If he knew that he had an older brother and that she intends to go find him, she also knows Kakarot would insist on coming with her, despite the unknown dangers ahead. And speak of the devil, Goku pokes his head from upstairs to ask what her and Grandpa are talking about which causes her to drench said grandpa in tea. Goku asks, Hey mom, are you going somewhere? Is it dangerous? I want to go too! Asking how long he's been listening and how much he's heard. He smiles. Not much. Only that she was saying she was going somewhere dangerous. Wherever it is, he wants to join her. When Gohan requests the boy come down, he has a gift for him. Jumping down, Gohan presents him with the Dragon Ball. Curious what it is. Gohan explains it's his precious four-star ball. He found it a long time ago and has always kept it with him for good luck. So, if one day he's no longer by his side, he can keep this to remember him by. Hearing this heartwarming reason, Goku happily accepts the heirloom, promising to treasure it forever. Turning to his mother, he declares it doesn't matter if the place she's going is dangerous, as he's become very strong, and he'll even prove it to her. Heading outside, he wants her to follow to showcase his new fighting moves Grandpa's been teaching him, who urgently reminds Gine that there's going to be a full moon tonight, prompting her to call for him to stop. He questions how come he always has to stay inside whenever there's a full moon. Gohan thinks it's time his student finally told her son, but she seems a bit hesitant to do so, not wanting to burden him with the same memories that haunt her. Alas, she spills. It's time she told her son the truth. He's not allowed to go outside because... There's a giant bald lizard monster that only appears at night during the full moon. It's really ugly and very dangerous. But this doesn't scare the boy at all. Goku spouts he's stronger than anything that could be found on Mount Paozu. Now wanting to prove this, he'll go and defeat that monster all on his own. When Gine bellows Kakarot, listen to his mother and stay inside, commanding he go up to his room right now. While frustrated, the boy listens, rolling his eyes. Gohan asks, a bald lizard monster? Seriously? Chiding, there's no way something like that would ever scare Goku. Also, raising her voice to him may have been a little unnecessary. 
and she knows, revealing she just panicked. But what was she supposed to say to him? It's really hard to tell him that he comes from another planet where an evil tyrant killed his father and the rest of his people. He wouldn't understand. Besides, he's happy enough living as an Earthling. Her mentor believes it would be best for her to just tell him the truth. It's better to tell Goku now than later. He might lose trust in her if she keeps him in the dark. And she supposes he's right, but if she does, he'll probably delude himself thinking he has a brother who's most likely dead. She can't let him suffer through that. Asking what she should do, and Gohan worries about her. If she chooses to leave, he himself can take care of Goku. But before making her decision, she needs to calm her mind and remember what he taught her. No matter what she chooses to do, he will always support her. She thanks him, but has a question, asking how come he's always been so hospitable to him. Sure, she would have realized by now, but Goku is like the grandson he always wanted, and she's the daughter he never had, and he has come to consider them both family, making her smile. And family or not, she questions how many times she'll have to correct him. His name is Kakarot, and the old man jokes as many times as it takes him to listen continuing to banter on how good a name it is and failing to pronounce the young Saiyan's real name. Who, whipping open the window, is set on showing his mom and grandpa that nothing can beat him. He'll defeat that monster and his mother will have to take him wherever she goes. He quietly jumps from the house and makes his way into the wilderness. Looking upstairs, Hine has made up her mind to tell Kakarot the entire truth. Supporting her decision, Gohan warns even after she tells him about his origins, he still thinks it would be better for them both to continue living as Earthlings, given the ideals of the Saiyan race are wrought with destruction and pain. After a short pause, Kine admits as much as she loves living here, she's come to realize that being Saiyans is all they have left of their legacy. Kakarot will inevitably grow up with the pride of a Saiyan. Making her way upstairs, she calls out to her son that she needs to have a talk with him before realizing he isn't there. The young warrior shouts he's looked everywhere, but still hasn't found that monster, thinking if such a creature could really be living around here. When he spots the moon, never seen it so big and so bright, lamenting how his mother never lets him go outside whenever it's… <laughs> Jumping down, Gine hollers Kakarot isn't upstairs and must have gone out the window. Grabbing the scouter, she blames herself, knowing she could have told him the truth sooner and has to go look for him. But now that she knows how to sense her son's key, she no longer needs this device. Gohan gets up to help her in her search, only hoping they aren't too late. And unfortunately, they are. Hine goes to stop him before he destroys everything, handing over the scouter. Gohan worries she herself plans to transform too. But that won't work. Kakarot has never seen her as an Azuro before and would probably just attack her. The only chance she has is to try to reason with him while his mind is still fresh. He has only recently changed, so it's possible. She'll save transforming herself as a last resort. Taking off, she tells Gohan this could get messy, so he should find a safe place to hide. And the old timer seems to know this, only hoping Gine will be careful and bring Goku back safely. Thinking back to the first time she turned into a great ape, she knows it's always the most difficult to control. Trying to reason with her son will be easier said than done. Appearing before him, she shouts to Kakarot if he can hear her. It's his mother. She knows he must be scared and confused, but she's here for him, pleading he just listen. She tries to explain his origin. The reason he has transformed is because the two of them are from another world. They're members of a warrior race called the Saiyans. And whenever they see a full moon, they turn into giant apes. That's when they... As Goku moves to attack, she begs him to stop. Only managing to dodge by mere inches. She knows if she's caught, it'll be big trouble. She nonetheless continues her attempts to reason with the beast yelling at him to remember who she is. Bellowing for Goku to forgive him. Gohan is able to free Gine from his death hold. Asking if she's all right, she restates she told him to go find somewhere safe to hide. He asserts this is very risky, so they must cut off his tail, though she won't do that to her own child. Not yet, believing she can still get him to control this form and reason with him. Not objecting, he decides if that's the case, he will grab his tail instead. That should be enough to calm him down. 
When he's stunned, she take advantage of it and try to talk to him. He won't be able to hold him for long, so make every second count. Seeing Gohan's plan works, she knows it's now or never. Again, pleading for the Azaro to listen to her voice and not let the beast inside control him. He is the one in control and has the legacy of the entire warrior race within him, calling for him to remember who he is. When the plan finally gives out, Gohan bellows this isn't working and he's unable to hold him any longer. She has to cut off his tail. Though all right, the Hermit has definitely been better. But Gine still isn't ready to do what needs to be done. She finally realizes Kakarot is merely too young to be able to control his transformation. But there is still another option. To fight fire with fire, she will stop him one way or another, so she'll become an Ozaru too. But the clouds have overtaken the moon, and Gohan screams out to her in fear. The blindsided attack has left the warrior barely able to move. But Gohan sacrifices himself to save her. Staring at his body, Kine cries, this can't be happening. This is all her fault. Thinking back to the conversation from moments ago, she knows she should have listened to him, but was blinded by the same Saiyan pride she swore Kakarot was destined to grow up with. And now... <laughs> Listening to her mentor, albeit too late, she removes the boy's tail. Knowing she's made a terrible mistake and should have known from the beginning, her son is too young to control himself while transformed. The thought that Raditz could still be out there motivated her to regain her Saiyan pride, but she couldn't have been more wrong. And in Gohan's pocket was the scouter, so that dream is gone in more ways than one. She sobs how sorry she is. Gohan paid the price for her mistake, only hoping one day he can forgive her. The next day, the pair put the old timer to rest, burying him with a unique marking at the gravesite. Kakarot cries he doesn't understand, asking what happened to Grandpa, and his tail, and why she looks so beat up, wondering if that monster did all this. Still overcome with emotion, she carefully tries to think of the words to say, looking at her son and simultaneously seeing the Uzaru. She gently explains his tail will grow back someday, and she assures that monster won't bother them anymore. And his Grandpa, what he should know is that he saved both of them. But now his time in this world has come to an end. He was their hero, and he should be proud of him. The boy huffs he's going to miss him. When she utters the name, Goku, getting his attention, as she never calls him that. With a smile, she affirms he heard right. Earlier, she didn't want to admit it, but that name is very pretty, and it actually suits him well. So he tell her to honor the memory of Grandpa Gohan if he wants to live on his son Goku from now on. Who would love to? He questions his mother if she still has to go away. But she isn't going anywhere. She wouldn't dare leave her precious baby boy all on his own. Picking him up onto her shoulder, she tells her son to cheer up. Otherwise, Grandpa will get upset, suggesting they practice everything he taught him and make each other stronger. With her scouter destroyed, she'll no longer be able to hear any transmission. If Raditz is still out there, she's sure they will see each other again one day. She promises Gohan she will tell Goku everything, but only when the time is right. Thanking him for everything he's done for them, she vows to honor his teachings and knows he'll be proud of them. She looks forward to the day they will see each other again. A few months later, Goku's tail grows back sooner than expected. To prevent an incident like last time from repeating, she decided to explain the truth about his transformation making it clear to him that the only person to blame for what happened is herself. It took time for him to process it all, but he eventually overcame it. Though she hasn't told him about Raditz or the Saiyans yet, there's only so much a boy his age can take in all at once. When she hears her son's voice calling from around the corner, announcing he's home, walking over, she welcomes him back and asks if he caught any fish for dinner, then wonders who this woman is. 
making her entrance into the story. Bulma introduced the concept of magic spheres that can grant any wish. Though it was hard for Gini to believe, this world has taught her that anything is possible. Unveiling Gohan's legacy was even more important than imaginable. With the arrival of this adventurous young girl, their lives were unknowingly about to change. This was as good of a time as any to see the world and perfect their techniques. The real adventure on Earth was only beginning.